The coastal city of Lulia is the largest in Sweden's northernmost county, Norrbotten. In the early part of the year, the temperatures are well below freezing, and the sea ice surrounding the picturesque city is 60 centimetres thick in places. Transworld Sport headed to Lulia recently to catch up with the Dutch speed skating community, who are hosting an event on the frozen waters here. Hundreds of Dutch skaters were in attendance for the third of five races in the KPN Ice Skating Marathon Grand Prix series. Event organizer Bram Smallenbroek. Why did we come all the way to Sweden for a Dutch competition? Because we have no natural ice in the Netherlands. Due to climate change, there's nothing left. So we have no choice but to look further afield, to places like Lulia. Skating is our national sport after football. As a nation, we love skating. And the ice here in Sweden is beautiful. It really is the place to be. This is the place to be. Open-air speed skating is a much-loved pastime in the Netherlands. The famed Elfsteden Tocht is an iconic Dutch event. When the temperature is cold enough, thousands of people get their skates on to tour the 11 cities in the province of Friesland. However, due to warmer winters, the Elfsteden Tocht has not been held since 1997. Many fans of the sport travel to Sweden to take part in the open race for members of the public, which is held the day before the elite competition. Unlike skating on canals and lakes, what sets the Lulia event apart is that it takes place on the frozen sea. It's very different to skating in an enclosed area like a lake. Here, you exit the harbour and you're out on the frozen open sea. You go under a huge bridge, then back in through another harbour. It really is the scenic route. Normally it's more like one giant circular lap, but here we disappear into the distance. Elite speed skating usually takes place indoors, where the cuts in the ice are regularly smoothed over. There's no such luxury in marathon skating. The cracks in the natural ice are just one of many different challenges competitors face, as leading skater Niels Messu explains. Skating is all about technique. It's more about maintaining concentration and being aware of cracks in the ice, especially as you become more tired. You can start shifting your body weight forward too much, and in turn, this means you will start hitting the cracks harder than before. So it's crucial to keep leaning back so as not to fall over. For the elite race day in Lulia, the temperature dropped to minus 14 degrees Celsius as the skaters took to the start line. The men had to complete 10 laps of the 10 kilometer course, whilst the women needed to circuit the route eight times. As the race got underway, it soon became clear that battling the elements would prove tough. When the wind began to pick up, teamwork was crucial in helping the skaters in the testing conditions. The wind is a vital factor in any race. It's actually quite similar to a cycling race. Skating has teams, and these teams help each other out. For example, you can shield a teammate from the wind by skating in formation. You're then conserving the energy of your team in order to help each other cross the finish line. And again, much like road cycling, there are often breakaways from the peloton. On the penultimate lap, 25-year-old Niels Messu hit the front of the race and built up a respectable lead. However, in the final kilometre, the chasing pack attacked with varying degrees of success. Mesu did his best to hang on to the lead, but in the end, he had to settle for third place. Victory belonged to 26-year-old Simon Schutten. 
On the last three laps, there was a lot of wind, and that made it really tough. It meant that I had to skate in the wind, which consumed a lot of my energy. I was fortunate, though, because I was able to eat off someone else's plate, as the Dutch saying goes. What that means is that I was able to shelter behind someone else and stay out of the wind, whilst they kept the pressure on the race leader. So, with a kilometre to go, I was able to attack and win. The wind really picked up on the last four laps. But as my body temperature was warm, it meant that the condensation inside my goggles began to freeze and I had to take them off. Obviously, that hampered my visibility and I began to worry that my eyes might actually freeze over. So yes, the conditions were very dangerous, but that's what I live for. I love extreme conditions like this. In the women's race, the peloton remained together throughout the majority of the 80 kilometers. With no breakaways, fans were treated to an exciting sprint finish. It was 32-year-old biology teacher Carla Ketelapa-Zielman who clinched victory by just two hundredths of a second. It was very hard out there, lots of wind, lots of snow, and obviously it was very cold. Because of the snow, it made the cracks in the ice harder to see, and a lot of people fell. The sprint was very close. I just about managed to pass Irles van der Stelt at the end. At the 2014 Winter Olympics, the Netherlands won 23 of the 36 speed skating medals, including eight of the 12 golds. Following the success of the five-stage KPN Grand Prix Tour, many of the skaters are hoping the marathon version of the sport can one day make an appearance at the Olympic Games. When I compare our sport to summer Olympic sports, such as cycling, swimming or athletics, they all have outdoor races that cover longer distances. I think it's strange that we don't have this for skating, as there is huge potential to develop the sport and reach a wider audience. And I think the crowds really enjoy seeing these sports outside rather than indoors. I think it would be very popular. Daarom is skiën zo populair.